third one is uh, one, we're gonna get more technical here for a moment. And we're gonna talk about one simple tweak um, to effortlessly increase your range and accuracy. And Rudy, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Love it. So I guess I'll just start by saying this, you know, when we talk about shooting at, the, at our shooting colleges and things like that, we talk about, you know, being able to shoot like an athlete. So how do athletes move and generally just create power generation and things like that. There's also the art of it. Every shooter is not the same. We're not creating just, you know, one specific shot for everybody. Everybody's shots a little different. And then there's the scientific aspect, which is what we just talked about with the measurement. So great shooters are great athletes, artists, and scientists. Now, what we want to talk about right now is kind of the athlete piece of it. Um, whenever we create power and force and want something to go in a straight line in any other sport, um, we tend to want to look wherever our follow through is. So if I have a baseball, right, a lot of them start tilted, they turn, they throw, and they're looking down the line. Their eyes and their follow through are in line with one another. Um, football, same thing. I played quarterback and they taught us how to rotate our body, follow through down the line. If you watch like professional dart players that actually just start, turn and throw archers, right? Riflemen, everybody that does anything in terms of power generation and getting something to go straight, they want their eyes and their follow through wherever the path of the ball or whatever it is that they're throwing to go in the same direction as their eyes. But in basketball, for a long time, we were taught 10 toes, square shoulders to the rim and we shoot the basketball. And when we do that, our follow through, you know, the barrel of our shot right here and our eyes are not in alignment with one another. And so to overcompensate with that, we end up doing things that cause us to be less athletic and less accurate because we have to either push with two hands and you see a lot of two hand shooters come in like that. Um, or you see a lot of shooters that come across their face and push the ball to the other side because they have to try to get their arm in line with their eyes. They fight to get that alignment, but because their shoulders are square, they do so inefficiently. And so what we talk about at PGC to correct this is what we call a tilted footprint. And on a tilted footprint, instead of starting with my toes square, we start tilted. And when I tilt, my eyes and my follow through can come in line with one another while also having all my momentum to go towards the basket. It's how we do things in every other sport except for basketball. And I think when we teach players how to shoot that way, the first thing I see is more power, um, a quicker shot, and way more accuracy with less left and right misses because their bodies are naturally in line with where they're looking. And so we call it a tilted footprint. Righties will tilt a little bit naturally to the left to get that right shoulder closer to the rim. Lefties will shoot and they'll tilt a little bit to the right, getting that left shoulder closer to the rim here. But the whole point is to get their eyes and their follow through in line with one another. And that can create a lot more consistency in a shot. And Dustin, I'll pass it over to you in a second. Uh, but first I wanna say this, when I first heard this, um, I didn't actually believe it's what I did. And it's not until I started teaching our shooting college that I was taught this, even though I was doing this my entire life. And so then I saw myself on video. I was like, oh, I do do that. And it is how I can shoot from farther out with greater accuracy. And so um, if anyone on the call right now is like, I don't think that's true. I don't, I don't, I've never seen that before. Uh, I would encourage you, and I'll actually we'll pull a couple of clips up here in a moment to show you some of the best shooters doing it. I would encourage you to experiment with it. And that's one of the things, um, and I, was, I, I know as I go out and teach shooting around the country is, is what I encourage, experiment, because there's a lot of different ways to teach shooting and you will find a lot of different methodologies. If you come to our course, if you go to another course, there's, there's different ways to do it. The goal at the end of the day is to have the ball go through the basket more times than it, it did in the past. And so as you experiment, um, keep an open mind is my encouragement to try things that might help the ball go in more. And this is one thing that by far, as I've taught over a thousand players shooting, is the number one technique thing that helps players make shots faster, just primarily a lot of times because of power generation. It gives players more power for all the reasons that you said, Rudy. Um, and before I go any further, Dustin, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, perfect. I have a couple little things. Um, thinking of like shooting alignment, getting the ball to the rim, all that stuff is perfect. And where I wanted to go with it is like diagnosing your misses. Um, whatever you shoot in training, you'll so say Rudy makes eight out of 10 and catch and shoot spot up threes from the left wing. 
that means they'll probably shoot 40 percent in games whatever you shoot in training it'll be 50 it'll be half that in games because there's speed there's rigor there's physicality there's fatigue all that stuff occurs and um a couple of things i've noticed this summer with athletes a lot of basketball is a single leg lunge into a goblet squat or a single leg lunge into a squat formation you think of a hezzy pull up i go split step squat shoot uh one of our power finishes at our courses or a spin move it's single leg and then i get into my wide base and i shoot the basketball a lot of players miss short um because their base isn't activated and so there are things that we can teach you, especially the shooting college, to activate the lower part of the body because that allows you to get the ball there. Um, I, I nerd out on basketball because I love it so much. But if you can see, I'm sure you can on your screen, many makes go to the back line of the basket. There was a cool study that FIBA did in 2021, and it was 92% of misses were short. And so there are a bunch of ways to get the ball there. But my big one for younger athletes is you got to learn how to activate the body. So you got to be able to get on your toes when you shoot. And then number two is HUB, hand under ball. Um, a lot of shooters, for some reason, if you freeze frame, frame them, the hand is behind the basketball. It's not under the basketball. And now you get those straight line misses as opposed to the perfect arc when you shoot the basketball. A way to think about it is the basketball has an eyeball. And as the eyeball gets to its target, is it looking straight on or is it looking down? If it's looking down, you're going to get a lot more mix. Hey, hey Dustin, can you pull that image up? Uh, you pulled it down so fast. We were able to see it. Sure. Yeah, so this is it right here. It's from a, a guy named Sefu Bernard, a coach that I really love and respect and I met through PGC, but he calls it Brad's Shooting, B-R-A-D-S, which stands for Back Rim and Down Shooting. Um, statistically, if the ball hits the back rim, um, it's a higher percentage make than a swish make is if the angle of the shot is right, because you can get a left back rim make, which would go left to right, a regular back rim make, which is back and down, or a right back rim make, which goes back to left. And so those three angles are larger than what a swish angle would be. And so it's all about getting the basketball to pass the midline of the rim to hit that back rim. And all that starts with having the toes on the ground and fighting for faster feet. Awesome. Rudy, uh, anything to add on that or a different take? And we also have those two clips um, that I think would be worthwhile showing, but I want to pass it to you before uh, we go to that. Yeah, I think there's some people that I've obviously seen this tilted footprint, but I think before we go any deeper down the rabbit hole, I think it'd be good just to make sure everybody's in alignment and has seen it. So why don't you pull those clips up and show those and we can talk about it a little bit afterwards. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, see here, Kevin Durant's feet pointed more toward the baseline. All right. And as we go, Rudy. Yep, if you pause right there. Yeah, if you could pause right there. So, so if you pause right here and you look at just the line of follow through, right, where his arm is, he's looking directly down, you know, we call it like the barrel, right, or right directly down the follow through line. So if you would look at him from the front, his right eye would disappear behind the arm because he's literally staring right down the target um, versus totally square we can see in between his arms. So now his follow through and his eyes are in direct alignment. So he's looking exactly where he wants to go with the basketball. This is the advantage of the tilted footprint right here. Let me go to a different angle here, right from the front. See it again from a different angle. Notice and all the things that you're talking about. Now, just one small additional tip, if you kind of watch and keep playing it through, when you talk about like just the generation, power generation of the ball, he's also, as his toes leave the ground, it's about the exact time that the ball is leaving his fingertips. So he, he's not jumping and hanging at the top very long. Yeah. As his toes leave the ground, the ball is leaving his finger. That's how you generate the most power from your lower body through your upper body. Because the moment your toes leave the ground, there's this thing called gravity that's pulling you back down. So your acceleration going up dissipates. And so if you wait all the way to the top of your jump and then you shoot the basketball, you're actually just shooting a complete upper body shot at a higher length. So KD 6'11", if you'd wait all the way to the top of his jump before he shoots the ball, he's shooting an all upper body, all arm shot at, let's say, 7'6", seven, 7'7", six, seven, seven, versus getting the power from his entire body. And when you get the power from your legs going through the basketball, you can shoot it from greater distances. And so as you watch, he's in line with the rim. He's looking down the line, and he's simply letting the ball go as soon as his toes leave the ground the ball is leaving his fingers. So he's not jumping very high. He's just making sure that all the power generated from his legs is going through the ball at the exact moment when he is most powerful going up. 
interesting yeah, and, and, well. and one yeah. thing to build off that um which is so so well said rudy but if you look at the upper part of the body so his shoulder elbow wrist like those joint hinges they fire and they stay fired so his ability to be disciplined with that follow-through creates consistency with his shot and so many younger players especially this summer um, I would notice would make shots when they held the follow-through or even hold the follow-through and let the arm dip and then would change their shot four or five shots later it's the ability to have the same form every single time and so even when he lets the elbow drop he's still um, pronating the wrist and making sure his wrist points down um, it's just a great way to maximize rotation to get some softer makes at the rim if you could give one action, the same thing as before, one action to take, how do they practice this as they, if they're going to go experiment with it after hearing it on this call, what do they do? How do they practice it? Yeah, two words, film and feel, film and feel. So you got to film your shot, like get the angles like Katie just had, either have somebody film you or put the phone up on something and then prop it and film it that way. You can't improve that what you me measure. And so you got to actually see it so you can watch and see those you know things that you're trying to change as well and then feel that's the artistry of shooting every shooter is a little bit different and so your tilt and katie's tilt and my tilt and steph curry's tilt they're all going to be slightly different the footwork might be slightly different you have to figure out you know at pgc we call it like that yes feeling that feeling where as soon as you shoot the ball everything just feels right it feels in sync it feels smooth it feels effortless it's like as soon as you go into it you're like oh yeah i bet 20 bucks that shot's going in and like once you find that feeling, you want to develop that feeling and rep it out so many times that you can get that YOC, that yes on command, where you can just call on it whenever you want and you can get that feeling whenever you want. And so film it so you can see it and tweak it and you can see the changes and then focus on that feeling, find that yes feeling in your shot.